was a teenage wedding and the old folks wished them well. You could see that Pierre did truly love a man was hell. And now the young Monsieur and Madame rang the chapel bell. Say la vie, say the old folks, goes to show you never can tell. Up an apartment with a two-room box sale. The Colorado was crammed with TV dinners and ginger ale. But when Pierre found work, the little money come and worked out well. Say la vie, say the old folks, goes to show you never can tell. Hey, great to see you. Joe here and welcome to another lesson and thank you very much indeed for joining me. So there you heard my rendition of a Chuck Berry song. And this one's known by a number of different names. Say la vie, you never can tell, teenage wedding. I'm going to call it you never can tell for the purposes of the lesson, yeah? Now for those of you who watch my live broadcasts, you're probably familiar with this one and I've had a lot of requests to cover it in a video. So that's what we're going to do in today's lesson. Let me zoom on in and start explaining it to you. Okay, so I'm kind of aiming this video at beginners and intermediate players, so if you're a beginner, then you know, just getting the basics of it down will be a good start for you. And if you're more of an intermediate player, then there is scope for you to develop some of your own solo work and things like that, and maybe refine the rhythm playing a little bit. Okay, so let's get started then. Now the song only has two chords. It has an A, and it has an E. We're kind of going to use this figure that is used in blues and rock and roll and lots of other things. So this is a great little figure for you to get familiar with and it's going to help you with a whole lot of other material as well. Now whilst it might look like I'm barring all four strings here on the second fret, I'm actually really only applying pressure on the third and the fourth strings. But this is just a good position for us to be in to play this kind of rock and roll bluesy kind of thing going on here because we're going to add this ring finger two frets up from where our index finger is. So that's why we use this figure instead of the traditional shapes like an A and an E. That just wouldn't work very well. Okay, so when we're playing the A chord, all we're really looking to do is to play the fifth, the fourth, and the third string sometimes. Okay, now I say sometimes on the third string because we're not always hitting that third string, just occasionally. And now with the right hand, what we're looking to do is that kind of thing. And if we count that, we can count one and two and one and two and one and two and one and two. And one and two. Yeah, so it's constantly going. Now what we need to do is to bring this ring finger into play and that's going to go on the 4th fret, 4th string. So that's how we're going to create our rhythm in the A chord like this. Okay, so this is a starting point. We've got off and on, off and on, off and on, one and two, one and two. Okay, so you can either count to yourself, or you can kind of say off and on. And then once you get into the kind of placement of this note here, on the 4th fret 4th string, then you'll be good to go. So we have 1 and 2 and 1 and 2 and 1 and 2 and 1 and 2. Or 
off and on and off and on and off and on. Now the same thing happens when we switch chords to the E. All we're doing is we're moving this first finger, the index finger, up now. And again, it looks like I'm barring five strings here, but in fact, I'm only concentrating on the fourth and the fifth. Okay, because I won't be playing anything below that fourth string. I'll just be concentrating on the sixth, the fifth, and the fourth, like so. Off and on, off and on, off and on. So the same principle, yeah? Now, it could be that you can't really play it that quickly, and that doesn't matter too much, because the way we kind of get things flowing is more important, and the timing is much more important. So we can play it real slow, and it's still going to sound fine. So we have one, two, and one, and 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 two. So it's much better slower and in time than quicker and out of time. That's an absolutely golden rule that you need to remember when you're playing anything. So now you'll probably notice that with the right hand, I'm dampening the strings. So if I wasn't dampening the strings, let's go back to our A position here. It would sound more like this. Okay, so that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. And that might be a sound that you want to go for. In fact, it is a sound that's used in rock and roll. So that's absolutely fine if that's the way you want to go. Or you have the alternative to put this part of your hand here on the strings and dampen the sound so you have more of a... So you have the option there, just how you want to play it, whether it's more ringing out or whether the sound is deadened a little bit. Yeah, And so you can decide which way you want to go with that. Let's just take a little look at the right hand, okay? As I've said to you, effectively what's happening is just... And I put a little emphasis on that two, in other words, where this finger's gonna go down. There's a slight emphasis. In other words, it's just a little bit louder when I hit that note. So we have... That's emphasized a little bit more than I would ordinarily, but you get the idea. Same with the E. Okay, so we're creating dynamics by doing that. So everything isn't the same volume. Now, once you've got the basics strummed down, I mean, that really will do you for the whole song. There's no need really to refine it if you don't want to. But when I play it, I put in some upstrokes. Okay, so I'll show you what I mean. can sound quite nice, yeah? So you can really play around with this rhythm and there's no end to kind of different things you can do with the rhythm. But the golden rule is to keep it in time, whatever you decide to do. Because if you don't, that's when it's all going to start sounding not as you would like it to be. Okay, and another thing that I sometimes do is when I go to the E chord, I play this figure. And all I'm doing there is I'm playing an open E twice. Then I'm using the middle finger on the third fret of the sixth string here. And then the fourth fret, sixth string. So we've got. Then we're back into the E shape. And back to the A. So in context, you got. So as you can see, there are lots of different options you can use on the rhythm side of things. 
and you can just play it down when you're starting out. That's a good way to really get a feel for the song. And then you can start putting in some of those upstrokes. Now the thing to remember when you do the upstrokes is that if you're in the E position, then you really don't want to hit the third, the second, and the first strings, okay? First, second, third. Because that won't sound good. And when you're in the A position, like so, again, you can get away with the third string in the A, because that's obviously part of the A chord, but you don't really want to hit the second and the first because then we're going into the top end a little bit more than we want to. It's kind of rock and roll rhythm, so we want to kind of keep it there. Like so. So the secret with this one is to just really take your time and just make sure that your timing is nice. And if you can do that, then the song's going to sound really, really nice, actually. That takes care of the rhythm. That's really all that happens right throughout the song. Now you'll notice that I played a little lead solo throughout the song. And that was very, very simple. All I was kind of doing was playing an A7, yeah? So this is this chord. All right, and all I'm doing here is I'm placing my ring finger and my middle finger on the ninth fret, first and third strings. And then I'm going to tuck this index finger in on the 8th fret, 2nd string. Okay, so we have that chord. Now, we just want to hit the bottom 3 strings when we're playing this solo. And what you can do is you can slide in so you can move it that whole shape back 1 fret and slide into the A7 by going... So you can either just play this A7 if you're just starting out. And if you're a little bit better than that, then you can put some of those slides in from the one fret below, yeah? So you can do more of a... Like so. And you do that again. And then we go to this shape. And all we're doing here is we're playing the first string on the seventh fret and the second string on the ninth. So that's to play over the E. Again, you can slide it like that. You don't have to slide it as many times. You can just experiment with what you think works for you. This is all part of making it your own. And then... Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play that solo and how it fits over the chords very, very slowly. Alright? So it starts in the A. Back to A. Still in A at this time. So we finish that with the E shape, yeah? Which means we go into the E. Go back to the E shape. But still in E. Back to A. Okay, so that's how the solo fits. Very, very simple, and plenty of scope for you to experiment with that. And you know, that basically covers all the different elements. So there you have it. I hope that that helps you. And just remember to enjoy the journey. That's the important thing. And also remember that there's plenty of scope within the song to make it your own. That's another important point. So as I say, I hope that you enjoy this one. 
and I look forward to seeing you all soon with another lesson. In the meantime, take care, be safe.